this is Gio Will from that Fan Production Squared, and this is just kind of going to be kind of a, an update to the pre-unboxing video that uh, I uploaded later, earlier on this week. Um, need to make this video because there's some changes to the um, uh, parts list that's going to be used for the build that um, were done after the unboxing actually started, and also I want to make a, a small mention about some of the unboxing footage. Now let's start with the parts first. Um, I decided not to use the Dominator RAM uh, because the reason for that is because the idea for using that was to water cool it. Um, and EK's water cooling uh, you know, blocks work with, you know, are specific, specifically made for, or at least the Monarchs are made for Corsair Dominator RAM, Dominator Platinum RAM. However, couldn't do it because I found out that the Dominator Platinum DDR4 RAM sticks are actually physically different from the DDR3 sticks and in such a way that it makes water cooling them impossible without actually vo voiding the warranty and tearing them apart to remove things. So the issue is at, the issue at hand is the light bar and the way that the heatsink is mounted onto the RAM itself. On the DDR5, the heatsink is just kind of screwed or you know, screwed on top of the RAM. You can just you know take that off and then put it on top. And the um, uh, DDR4s though, you have the light bar situated on top of that, and then the, the heatsink is actually bolted into the sides of the RAM inside of the the casing. So you have to remove the casing, unscrew the uh, screws to remove the RAM, the the heatsink. Then you also have to remove the light bar. And that was just way more than what I wanted to do for this. So I decided, you know, screw it out. Screw it. I'm not going to use it. Um, you know, screw Corsair for making something so insanely stupid. I mean, who the hell wants a light bar on the RAM? <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I don't see the point of it. It's just, you know, eye candy, I guess, or bloat, bloated manufacturing to uh, drum up the price or something. I have no clue. So I decided to go with the G Scale uh, uh, Rip Jaws. Uh, series 4 uh, RAM, same speed, uh, 2666 megahertz. Um, 200, it was about 200 less, about like 430 something. Um, it, the timings are a little bit more loose, but uh, overall it's not make that much of a difference. Same density too, 32 gigs, 4 times 8 gig sticks. Um, another change was in the tubing I was using. I was originally going to use uh, ProFlex or Pro something uh, tubing and Aqua Tuning didn't have that tubing, so I decided to get Clearflex 60 instead. Um, which was a little bit less expensive. Um, although I did, I think I bought more than I would have otherwise. Because it comes in 10 feet amounts for the, uh, you know, an actual 10 feet pre measured amounts from uh, Pro Chill Flex, whatever the hell it was. The Clear Flex 60 stuff, though. You actually had to buy it by whatever amount of measurement it was. It actually came at, like the actual would measure it out, cut it, and send it to you that way. Uh, aqua tuning would, because it wasn't it. It's was just kind of wrapped in some cellophane tape. Um, one single long piece of like I think it was like nine feet or so of tubing. Um, so yeah, uh, those are the only two major changes I believe. I'm just trying to think. So the Swift Tech MCP655, otherwise known as the D5 pump, um, really pretty much every um, water cooling person on YouTube worth their salt uses this pump. It's a really nice pump, uh, pretty much industry standard, I guess. It's actually an industrial pump. Um, I was reading some of the, the you know va the values on here for the pump flow. This thing will pump through 317 gallons per hour on the highest setting. 317 gallons, this small little thing. That's just bloody insane. Um, so, let's go and open up the thing here. Again, I've already opened it up, so there's no steels or anything to deal with. Of course, opening it up is still a pain in the arse. You now, it's funny how a lot of YouTubers are using arse now instead of ass. Even the non British ones. So it comes in this, you know, housing thing here, and the flap just comes up off of here, like so, and the pump is here. You get some uh, stuff 
and the guy then looks like a mounting pad thing. Um, pump sits on top here, wiring sits underneath. And um, essentially this top piece here, this you know rid section, this is going to come off and you're just going to have the pump and that's what the, this is essentially what the uh, pump top is going to replace. Uh, it's a Molex, but it's a Molex connector, but it only uses two of the uh, pinouts. And um, it's variable speed, one to five. This is actually very handy when you're first doing the loop because you can use it on one to, to or you know, one or two to when you're initially filling it, so you're not pulling uh, the liquid down too fast, still wire too fast down, and grounding it out. But also because you can switch between three and five to kind of jostle jostle the bubbles in your system around and kind of kick their bubbly arses out probably asses out of the system. So it helps you get rid of air a lot easier. Um, so let's go ahead and try to put this back in the box. Unlike some things, you know, once it's out of the box, it doesn't. It can go back in. Maybe not so easily. There we go. Just going to try and get through the smaller things tonight and then uh, do some of the larger things later on. Um, let's go with something I haven't opened yet, so, you know, that'll be a surprise for everyone. That's the Corsair 200, or 1200, oh yeah, 200, that's nice. And this thing is just freaking massive, heavy. Oh, it's just bloody huge. So, this pretty much takes up the entire, well actually it doesn't, this thing has a very wide viewfinder on it. Nice. Um, so this thing is the... Again, AX 1200i from Corsair. Um, it's an 80 plus platinum rating. Uh, let's see. Modular, digital. So, yeah, digital uh, power supply, so it's got all that nice stuff in it. Um, seven year warranty. Um, there's a digital signal processor, so. At, uh, has tighter voltage regulation and uh, essentially it results in a much cleaner uh, power power uh, signal. So let's talk about the power ratings and stuff because you know it's something that not a lot of reviewers go over. I don't think. So um, current is 15 amps. Uh, AC is uh, 100 to 12, 240 volts for the input. Uh, frequency 50 hertz to 60 hertz for the output ratings on DC. Um, so you have 30 amps, 180, uh, 30 amps and 30 amps on the 3.3 and 5 volt rails, with uh, 180 watts being drawn by those two. For the positive and negative 12 volt, uh, positive 12 volt, you get you get 100 100.4 amps and 1204.8 uh, watts. So it's actually a little bit, it actually goes over 1200 watts. Um, it looks like, or maybe not. I guess it's combined one. Who knows? I don't really know. Because um, you know their math does not equal 1204.8. That's just like on the positive 12. You also have 17.8, 180, and 9.6 on the other rails. Um, yeah, negative uh, for negative 12 volt. You got 0 0.8 amps, uh, 9.6 watts, and the positive 5 BSB, 8.5. Three point five amps and seventeen point five watts. Um, Corsair link compatible, obviously. Uh, heavy SL. I wanted to go with the. Um, does have a, oh, it does have a. Cool. I wanted to go with the fifteen hundred I, but I don't think my circuit breaker, my breaker box, could handle it, and I don't want to pay an electrician to come out and do stuff. So it comes with the uh, you know the normal uh, ATX cable, 24 pin, 20 plus four, um, two EPS uh, ATX 12 volt cables of the eight pin four by fours. Um, comes with eight PCIe PCIe eight pin six plus two, uh, 16 K uh, SATA cables. Uh, that's you know the four four SATA connectors on each cable, uh, 12 peripheral and others from Molex connections. Four pins and two floppy drive cables. Four pins. I really who uses floppy drives anymore? I don't know why they've included that crap in here. 
I guess maybe some specialized things maybe use a floppy drive cable, like maybe a disk reader or something. But at this point in time, I mean, it's going to be eight. It's all going to be SATA by now. Um, so, yeah, digitally controlled power. Um, upgrade internal components and design for the 80 plus platinum. Fully modular cables, easy quick installation. Um, See, so yeah, I'm going with the 1200, and this is going to be barely enough for my system, and that might seem insane to say that 1200 watts is, like, barely enough, but if I was going to run my system as I have it configured, and if those configuration values are right on the website, um, at uh, full bore, you know, full usage, with uh, an overclock of 4 gigahertz on my processor, I'd be overrunning this power supply by about 100 watts. That may be even more, even greater with the uh, <clears throat> 390X as well to see. Though there is something to consider the fact that the power, the power supply is not going to be powering a, any fans on the on the video card. So that's another thing though that that doesn't account for. There's got to be a little bit of power, less power draw from that because you got the uh, hardware for that on the mother on the circuit board for the graphics cards that detects the heat and does the ramping. Um, some of that's also on software though too. Then you also have the fans themselves, which can pull uh, quite a bit depending on their. Um... Right, move this back a bit. Depending on their, uh... you know what they are. So let's go ahead and open up this mother bed mother. Um, crap. There, there is some seals on this. Maybe I can just peel them off. Yes, I can. Okay, good. At least this is actually, you know, it's a really high quality box when you can take off these uh, seal things without actually ripping the box apart. That's awesome. I have actually not seen that happen yet. So I'm already impressed by this. Um, but yeah, if you seen it, if you went and looked at the, um, uh, what's his name? There's a, you know, a very renowned um, PCU reviewer that does, you know, a whole bunch of stuff. I get the, get the name of the website now, but he did a review on the 1500. I and on the inside of it, the pasting job they did, there was just stuff everywhere, paste everywhere on that thing. This literally just pretty much solid packed with silicone. Alright, so. Uh, that box out of the way, and we have another box. Not surprisingly. Um, let's see, this one's going to be a little bit tougher to deal with. I don't have anything to open it with. I'm going to use this, maybe. No. i grab my. Exacto knife here. Should have brought down my tool chest thing that I have. I'm gonna bring that down uh, next time we do some recording. Do a little piece on that as well. So I got a uh, uh, I forget the make of it, but it's uh, like a 145 piece tool kit. It has all kinds of things you would need for this stuff, including an exacto knife. So it opens from this side, I believe. Yes. Okay. So inside we have a warranty guide. Um, Link SW tells you to download the latest software or something. You get a manual for all the for the AX 1200, 860, and 760. Um, talks about the product features and stuff. A little bit later. So we have this cable. I have no clue what this thing is. Does it have a? Let me see. It's actually in a static bag, so I don't know what. It might be a Corsair Link cable or something. It usually has a parts list in the beginning of this thing. Um, let's see. Let's just open it and find out, I guess. Is there a tear spot? No, there isn't. Well, we'll just use the, uh, get in here with a, uh, exacto knife here, then. Works for all kinds of things. Um, okay, it's a, yeah, Corsair Link. Uh, this is the, I don't know, it's, uh, some sort of digital thing here. Let's see. Um, the USB dongle. 
I guess so. That goes in there, and then you uh, hook it up somehow. I'll figure it out later. Actually, I don't know what this is for, really. Um, actually, I have quartz rail infused in my current system, too, so. Yeah, I don't know. There's a case badge in there, some zip ties, mounting hardware, this bag. Um, got the power cable. Really thick gauge for all the power coming through this thing. Then you have your huge bag of cables. Oh, that's traditional with Corsair. Um, we'll go over that in a bit. Then, last bit here, and an actual velveteen bag. So you know it's high class, I guess. This is the power supply. It's not really too big. Though it does take up most of the, make most of the weight up in the box. Corsair logo on the front. I think it's also, yeah, it's got a bag around it on the inside too. So it's double bagged here. So here you go. Let's go ahead and unwrap it here. Let's see what time is it. 740. Okay. So yeah, pretty much there you go. What's interesting about this from the reviews I was reading and stuff is that this fan won't even spin. It's huge. It's a 200 millimeter fan on the top. Won't even spin until you reach 30% uh, 30 of the output of this thing. Otherwise, it's able to stay cool. Um, at the lower temps. And I see some of the huge pasting jobs in there. Um, it's a really high quality uh, PSU. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, yeah, it's on operation at low to moderate loads. So it's, I guess it's just to tell you that you know if you don't hear the fan going, it's not because it's broken, it's because it's supposed to do that. <laughs> Maybe they were getting a lot of uh, Support call saying, hey, your thing is dead on arrival. The fan doesn't even work. Um, so, yeah. That's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and look at the all the cables here. It's like cable hell, really. So, this is the, I guess, the... Yeah, this hooks up to the um, Corsair link. And I'm not really sure what it connects to. It's like a four pin something. Four pin. Looks like a fan connector or something on the end. I'm not really sure. Um, then you get you know, all these it's like raining cables. To make it rain. Um, so yeah, it's just you know, all the stuff that listed on the box is obviously in here. A um, couple smaller things like this Molex to four pin. Like fan header four pin, um, so yeah, they're all marked CPU for this one, so you're not hooking up a GPU to CPU eight pin, which is nice because uh, pretty sure that would like you know cause some sort of frying or holy hell look at this thing. This is the um, CPU cable, actually kind of short really. Um, I'll have to see how it works on the uh, Phantom case that I have. I guess it's not too short, but still, maybe I'll get an extender or something later on before we get into the actual build. Go ahead and tie that back up for now. Um, the build's not going to actually happen until probably a week and a half to two weeks after this bit, first video has been done, so it's getting a head, a head start on the uh, unboxing. Let's get all these cables for looking. I'm not even sure how they got them all in there. It's just like physically impossible for me to put them back the way they had them. They had to have, like some sort of quantum packing technology in here. To get all of this stuff in here. Well I kind of got it in there. It's not very efficient, effective. Barely closes, but we got it. So um gonna throw this back in here. 
I'll go ahead and read through the manual and let you know of any quirks for this thing next uh, for the next video that I record for this. Um, I think we got enough time to do one more thing here. So, I think I'll do the reservoir. That's a pretty short thing here. Yeah, I got like 17 minutes still. So, let's get this out of the way. So it's got the reservoir today. I'm going to be using the Bits Power Water Tank Z Multi 250 inline uh, cylindrical res uh, reservoir. Again, like a lot of the stuff that I got was like the last of its stuff on on, uh, on YouTube, yeah, on uh, Amazon. So one thing you'll need to, to think about when you, you know, thinking about this. Well, let's do this first. The uh, reservoir actually comes in this, you know, half quarter, three quarter thing um, foam for protection, and then you have this uh, reservoir here. Um, one thing you have to be aware of is that they actually kind of have things reversed um, on the. Uh, all the images and all the guides and, and reviews and things, the at least on my version, I'm sure that's going to be true with the other ones. The fill thing here, which is supposed to be there, just to kind of help um, keep uh, water from going back up and out of this, was on the bottom instead of the top. Um, so what I had to do was I had to actually unscrew the caps, which you can do, and the side slime all over the place. It doesn't really matter. It's actually a pretty hefty design. Um, so, what happened was that the, both of the, this hole here, and, um, this here, I think it was this and this were on this hole over here, and I wanted them to be on the top three because I'm going to be using, um, those for stuff. Um, so, what, uh... What happens here is that actually what we can do is this see because they give you you know a lot of stuff to work with for different situations this what this is is actually a, a port for like a high intensity uh, LED to be shoved in there so you can actually light the, the liquid from the outside um, I'm just gonna put this on the bottom because what I'm gonna be doing with the top is um, I'm going to have one port be the kind of the air bleeder, which is what this little piece is here. I can get it undone. Just kind of is an end cap that's hollow and then has these little air ports on it so that as water is going down, you're not having that pressure issue uh, while you're filling it or running the reservoir or the, the system. Um, now I'm going to have a fill port, uh, probably this, well, it'll probably be this one. Um, uh, hooked up with a 90 degree fitting that I'll come to a uh, funnel that I'll have that actually has a one G1 fourth fitting on the end of it so you can like hook it up to a fitting and have a watertight filling mechanism. Then have the uh, uh, tube from the MOSFET block come into this port here. Um, yeah, they give you a bunch of stuff. So what I just did was I took, took some stuff, the uh, stuff off of this and the bottom section there, which was this and this thing here and just put them on the uh, the top three ports here and then screwed everything in the other way around. I'm just going to put this fitting on top of here for now. Um, so you probably have some leftover stuff and you, know, you can just put it right back on. It doesn't matter wh which side these go on, I don't believe. Um, just as long as you get the right side. Well, it won't screw in any other way than you know, the one side. You can't put them upside down. That's the reservoir. Um, I eat a lot of water cooling people use this. Um, I think Singularity uses this exclusively, this, if not this model, this uh, size of reservoir. Um, so that's going to be it for tonight. I'll also get some uh, mounting stuff too, I guess. I mentioned that. Um, so for tonight. We'll do some more of this to either tomorrow or Saturday. Or tomorrow or Thursday, rather. Um, I'll do uh, the uh, radiators, talk about the GPU blocks. And uh, maybe also go over the hardware because that should be here by then as well.
So, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the, uh, the unboxing videos for our 2015 build so far. And I will see you later on in the week. Alright, so, um, let me see here. Get this modified a bit. Alright, so, um, first we're gonna go through some of this other stuff here. Maybe go into the case too, I'm not sure if I'll do it today or not, but, um, see all the stuff you see over here. We're gonna go over all that. So, we're gonna go over, uh, take a look at this. This is the Dr. Power 2. It's a, uh, power supply tester from, uh, Thermaltake. Uh, I figured I'd get one now because you just never know when if a PSU is going to be good or not. And then this is kind of a build at the expense. I want to make sure I don't fry anything with the uh, the bad PSU. I haven't actually tested this yet because I need a power supply to test it with. And I just got the power supply the other day. Um, haven't tested it yet. I'm going to wait till uh, we get to the build to do that. Um, so. Uh, it's pretty simple. There's no, you know, internal battery power supply, or whatever. It gets its power directly from the uh, uh, 24. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, 24 pin connector on the bottom here. I assume anyway. It makes sense. There's no battery covers or anything. Um, on the top here, you have a couple things. You have a Molex connector. A I think one of them is a CPU 8-pin, the other one is a, a GP, uh, graphics card 8-pin on the top here. Um, and also a SATA connector, so there's a SATA data port, and it's that kind of chip-looking thing on the top there, I don't know if you can see it on this very well. Of course, it looks like a... There's that green little chip thing above the Molex, that's the SATA power connector. Um, so yeah, the, the black one's the 4 8-pin CPU connector, and the red one's for a 6 or 8-pin six or PCIe connector. So you can use either of those on there. So, what this will show on here in real time is the, um, uh, displays voltage outputs uh, in real time. We'll display voltage up to, uh, 0. 1 volts for the 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt, 5 BSB and negative 12 volt rails, or I guess it's not really rails, it's uh, I don't know what you would call them. Now, they used to be rails though, but not anymore. Everything is on, essentially on its own. Well, maybe the 12 and the negative 12 are on the same rail, but I think everything else might be on different ones. I don't really know what PC architecture is like these days. Uh, displays the PG value, which is, I don't know, um, doesn't say what PG stands for, it says PG. It's like, you should know what PG means, otherwise you're an idiot. Um, PG, doesn't say PG anywhere on here. And on the back, there's a FAQ. Um... No, I don't see anything like that on here. So, um, yeah. So there's a couple different modes, apparently. Or it says model, I guess, I don't know if that means mode or, mode or model as in different. Would be test. So this is different, yeah, it's mode. This is model on here, but it's really, it's really mode. It's like a typo or something on the for that. So difference between mode A and mode B. Um, let's see. In mode B, it says when test fails, system stops at the uh, icon where the fault occurs. It displays letter F on the LCD panel. So uh, you can go look up online exactly like this user guide. Or it's, I think it's too small or too bossy to come up on the. Yeah, it's, 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 you can kind of see it, like an oriented right, but at the same time it's a little too glossy to uh, show up correctly. Um, so that's power two. Check out this thing on the screen there. Eh? 
So, uh, we'll go with the, uh, let's do the radiators now. Well, yeah, radiators. Um, this in here. Ordered a bunch of stuff this morning, so it'll be coming tomorrow. So I'll have more stuff to do tomorrow. Then all I have left to do to get is the uh, CPU and the RAM. Oddly enough, those two items will make up half the cost of what was left to buy this morning. Like together, they're about seventeen hundred dollars. So maybe they'll go down over the week, next couple weeks, next uh, week and a half or so. So I'm going to be ordering them. Uh, on, um, well, I don't know if I'll do it this, next week or next Friday. It depends. So I get paid next Friday. Well, Thursday, I think. Thursday morning. Friday morning, Thursday late night. So I may order them on Wednesday morning, get them on Friday. Um, so yeah, let's do these next. These are basically the same thing, uh, just one is bigger than the other. Um, it's the Nexus, that's uh, three X's. Nexus, uh, XT45 full copper radiator, it's a single 140, um, from Apple Cool. Um, let's just take it out and have it take a look at it now. Got some, uh, case badges. Uh, you have this box here, which has your stuff in it. Um, screws, some uh, end caps, and Allen wrench for whatever you might need that for. Actually, these screws are Allen head screws. What the heck? Okay, that's funny. These are actually Allen wrench screws. They don't give you normal screws. Uh, I guess maybe uh, over there in the UK or something, they don't... Use flathead or Phillips head, Phillips head, whatever they're called. But they're, uh, I guess, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> it's gonna make, you know, changing out fans on the radiator if it's ever needed a pain, but I guess we'll have to deal with it. Uh, these you use, I'll show you what these are for. Because on this thing, you have six different outlets that you can use. Um, and literally, you have. So you can mount this however you want, you know, mount this way, mount this way, flat, sideways, whatever. Um, there's just so many holes, there's just, you know, tons of mounting options. Also, it has a very, I don't know if you can tell on this, has a very uh, uh, wide uh, fin design, so there's a lot of air that can move through this, um, which is going to be good with the fans. Even though it's going to be a lot of static pressure needed, you're going to be getting a lot more airflow through them than you would normally on a... Some other type of radiator. Um, and it's full copper too, um, all the way through. So these are just like rubber stopper things. Just pull them out and plug in your uh, G1 fourth, uh, you know, G1 fourth uh, fittings. And then so you put in the ones you uh, fill in the ports you need. And you take these plugs, which have a uh, flathead you know, slot on them. So you can use that as well as uh, you know, tighten them by your you know, finger tight. So you just take them, you plug them into whatever holes you're not using, and you can uh, uh, you know, lock them off essentially. There is a seventh port on the back of this thing. And um, what people use them for varies. Uh, like, for example, Linus from Linus Tech Tips. He uses, it might be Linus or it might be Jay's two cents, I'm not sure, it might be both of them. Now uh, they use those uh, ports for, you know, air bleeding. So when they're filling up the loop, they use it to allow air out of the system instead of having it have to, you know, be pushed all the way through to back into the radiator or something. Um, it's important though that you uh, know when to put a uh, cap on the end of that because eventually they're going to have stuff coming out of that if you don't. So yeah, it's just on the back here. And they give you uh, they give you enough to uh, do those. So I'm just gonna put all these in right now because I already know how the loop's gonna go for my system.
course, I got some other stuff coming that's not going to get here by tomorrow. Um, the Mayhem Fast the White, uh, concentrate the EK block, uh, EK water block for my MOSFETs. All that stuff is going to be coming, I don't know when, sometime next week probably. And I guess, I gotta tell you, if you have to buy anything from EK, try to find it on some other website first. EK's shipping char shipping expenses are just stupid. Just put it that, leave it at that, stupid. Um... You know, they charged me just to ship a MOSFET water block. Like, 20, well, yeah, I don't know what it would be equivalent to dollars because I don't have... Well, I guess I do have my phone over when I'm using it for other stuff, but essentially it charged you, like, 23 pounds, euros. Is it euros or pounds? Euros. Uh, shipping, which is ridiculous. Um, for, for an example, counterpoint, um... Uh, aqua tuning shipping is not more than 11 uh, 11 pounds there which is still a little bit more because pounds to dollars is a, is a little bit more of a uh, toward pound um, you know the pound has the advantage there more than the euro does but still tons less than uh, EK's shipping that's just ridiculous so yeah don't buy directly from EK unless you have to and I had to, so nobody else carries, except for, yep, you guessed it, Frozen CPU carries the stupid MOSFET block, and CPU, Frozen CPU is dead as a door now, so that's not a viable option. So this is essentially the same thing, um, except it's the dual 140 uh, mil right here. I have not yet taken this out of the bag. So yeah, just same design, everything just, you know, twice as long. Same thing at the port here. All the six over here. And also for the hardware, it's also inside of that box in here. Um, of course, you get twice as much stuff since you get twice as many uh, ports to deal with in terms of the fan mountings. Also, apparently still, Allen wrench screws. Um, so I'm just going to do this again real quick. Get this ready to go right now. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use the, the seventh port for air bleeding because there's, uh, like I mentioned on the, the multi-tank Z, there's that one uh, like plug or whatever piece that does that for you. So... I forget who makes makes this. I think it's uh, I think Roswell. I don't know. <laughs> it's a uh, 45 piece kind of tool set, and there's some high quality bits and there's some low quality bits. I don't know if you can see everything properly from right there, but it comes with all kinds of stuff, as you can see. Um, you have those pliers, regular pliers, exacto knife, a bunch of jeweler uh, screwdrivers. However, oddly enough, this bigger one is a flathead, not a, a Phelps head. Phillips head, whatever. Um, these, I'm not sure what these are. Some kind of uh, cutting implement, though. Maybe a kind of wire cutter or something. There's also a wire stripper. But that's one of the lower quality bits, and you'll see why. So get this back in. The stuff, how the stuff's fit in here is annoying too. Uh, so these are the wire uh, strippers, and they aren't very uh, high quality. As you can see, these padding things come off. And there's also no, you know, it's not spring kind of thing. So it's just you know, you have to go in there, and then you have to kind of come back and do stuff. Um, yeah, you got a whole bunch of different things that you can do with this. Um, a bunch of different, uh, it's like wire types and standards and things. So you're close enough to show them on this. I yeah, can't really see it too well. But yeah, um, a brush, because I guess, you know, we're going to be uh, paleo and paleo polishing, you know, old dusty cases, kind of brushing things off delicately to see what kind of dinosaur 
parts are in it or something. Um, so we can, you know, send them to a museum to be memorialized. This is another horrible part that doesn't go in very well. There we go, you have to go in that way. Um, this is an interesting thing. If I can get it out. I have no clue what it actually does. Uh, it's some sort of electrical tester, though, I think. As you can see, it has this uh, flood end on it, but it also has a like a light in here, or a fuse or something. So I'm thinking as you, you know, touch something that's electrical, and it tells you if there's, you know, an electrical charge in it or something. Let me see. Now, I guess that's not the right type of thing. No. I think it has to do more with, like, open electrical cables or something. And from a camera to start back up, my phone's starting to go dead, too. Not phone, uh, camera. Battery's down to one bar. How much time's left on this thing? Can't see. Actually, I can see over here. Um. It says one hour, 54 minutes. I don't think I have that much time. <laughs> we'll see. Um, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, one of these. This, I would have killed to have this on the last build. This is like a, you know, you go in to retrieve a screw or something, or to drop a screw into a hole. That's what these are. Uh, then you also have one of these deals. The alien, you know, stomach protruding things. It's like a horror movie watch. It's like, you know... Like, it's like, you know, tasting the air, looking for, you know, it's prey, and then just goes. It's like, you know, unsuspecting victim here, and just goes, boom, and it's dead. You know, I can make horror movies out of these things, and it's just like, classic, like, friggin' horror monster kind of stuff. Um, what else we got in here? Uh, these things, I have no clue what these are either. It's some kind of, I guess it's like a, a caliper kind of thing. You know, it looks like some sort of, you know, type of medical instrument that we won't go into. It's just like maybe nose hair puller or something, I don't know. Yeah, you, you push it on the insides and it brings them out and then you can just like kind of bring stuff up. Oh, this thing too. This thing is useless. You know, people will say, oh, you gotta have anti-static wristbands. They're full of crap. You don't need these things. Um, if, if you're a good enough... PC builder, you don't need these things. Um, if you go around, you know, scrapping your socks on on carpet and then, you know, touching something that's, you know, statically sensitive, then, yeah, you're going to burn it up. But, you know, that that's, you know, that's kind of like Darwin Award territory there. Uh, what else we got? This thing, this, I didn't know what this was at first. That's just a pointer. It's actually a metallic, it's, you know, magnetized and apparently our fitting things here here we go see <laughs> the fittings are not magnetic so they must not be uh kind of ferrous metal or something especially brass i guess here but just watch this thing this is insane how powerful this thing is it's crazy um so yeah another way to pick up screws when you drop them although this is a little more dangerous because it's magnetized so you know look out for your hard drives um, we got a bunch of stuff over on this side. We got a soldering iron. Now, I would recommend, based on all the, I actually didn't put a snap in there. Off, off all the, um, actually yeah, I did snap in there. there we go. Off of all the reviews I've seen on this thing, don't use it because it has the propensity to explode apparently or something, catch on fire. So, I suggest not to use it. And you got solder here. You know, the warning on it saying, you know, warning may cause, uh, this product contains chemicals, including lead, known to, known to the state of California to cause birth defects and other reproductive harm. So, in other words, uh, may cause cancer in certain places. I had a joke in there, but, uh, I don't want to, to mention it right at the moment. Um, you got a bunch of assorted, you know, things, sockets. I don't know if they're metric or standard, scientific, whatever they call it. 
and just a whole whack of these things, um, including, oddly enough, proper security hex things. So if you if you tried to open up, if you had a, a previous let's say previous generation uh, hex screwdriver or screw thing that you could use, and you tried to use it on your PS4, if you have one, you probably found out pretty quickly that your PS4 didn't take the didn't take the the screws they had because. Um, Sony decided to go with, I think it's either, I think it's either, which one is it? I think it's this one. Decided to go with this crazy new design where it's, you know, the traditional star hex and then has this kind of hole in the middle of it. So that's one reason I got these for. Oh, it wasn't again until I started building the, the system, but I wanted to clean my PS4 out. Um, or was it PS4? No, my PS3 Slim, that's what it was. Not the four, but the four probably uses the same the same security switch. So I got that early. Um, we got some more over here, more traditional stuff. And to go with this nice, this is a very awesome thing here. It's actually a wrench, a ratchet, a ratchet based. So you know, it's not one of these things where you just do it yourself. It's got a ratchet on, it, but it does have a neutral. So you could just do it in either direction or. Yeah, you know, just an uh, easy way. Ratchet it. Um, so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, a little bit later here. And I'm going to tighten down these uh, things a little bit. Plugs a little bit. So you also get some solder wick to take off solder. Electrical tape. I wish they had duct tape instead of electrical tape. That's electrical tape. Um, and you get a whole ring of Allen keys, so you didn't even need to get the ones from Optical, uh, Optical rather. Uh, a flashlight, yes, an actual flashlight. Actually, it's pretty good intensity. I'm going to blind you with it here for a second. Um, works pretty well. You get a hammer that has like this little end cap to soften blows on it. You can also take it off though, and you know, if you want to smash your computer up because you're mad, that it's not starting or something because you've got to plug in the power cable you can do it with, you know, take that off and this end will do it. Of course you could use this end too. Both uh, good at doing that. Getting the cap back onto this thing though is an art form that I've mastered apparently. And you have a bunch of these things and I have no clue what these are. I think they're some sort of uh, like uh, terminals for audio cables or something. But you got a whole ton of those. And that's what's all in this thing. Pretty comprehensive kit. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these down real quick. I should probably put it on tight instead of loosen. Again, you don't want to go too tight, but I'm gonna go tighter than finger tight because, yeah, I'm getting a little bit more out of it, a little more turn out of them, a couple more, like about another quarter turn out of this thing. I'm gonna make sure these are properly tightened. So I'm not leaking out in the case. Again, they don't want to go too tight because you know, potentially you could strip them out or do other bad things. Let's go this big one and throw everything else in here. Um, there's still that one on the end. It's funny. I'm, I'm glad I checked the you know the item list that supposed to come with these because I was going to buy these things separately. So I realized, no, well, let's probably see if they actually come with it first. And they do, so that's good. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to go through the bottom on this one. It'll either be this way or this way. Um, but I could go this way or this way or this way if I wanted to. See, I got the ones on top as well. These are fairly expensive radiators. Um, what am I doing? Going on the wrong ends. The, 40, the single Ford at 140 was like 50 bucks. This one was about 80. Okay, they're not that cheap. That's you know part of why custom water loops cost arm and a leg and a kidney and a lung, half your brain. Because it's, it's all so expensive. It's a lot higher quality parts though once you find in like a Corsair loop too, though. So yeah, the pump's better. The radiators are better, the tubing's better. I don't know about the coolant. 
I think Corsair has better coolants, if you ask me, how much you can get. Because, um, you know, it's suggested to use distilled water in these things. Um, but you have to, you know, flush them and refill them after a while. Whatever coolant Corsair has in their closed loop systems doesn't have that, you know, don't have to do that with it. So it's, that, that part only is it really, um, better. Just gonna throw this back in there. So, next up is going to be back here for oh, our buildings and we use it a lot. Um, let's get these back in the boxes first, I guess. Probably a good thing to do. Let's see. Let's get back in there. Actually, no, this probably won't. Let's not use it. This box was already crammed over capacity before. So I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to throw them in the box once we get the radiator room. Um, I suggest that you use these screws that they give to you if you're going to, you know, do stuff with them. Uh, kind of interesting uh, mounts and things because if you go too deep on this radiator or on any, either of these radiators when you're screwing screws in if they're too long, they'll actually pierce into the radiator itself and that'll cause issues from leaking all the way to, uh, well, leaking is uh, more drastic, I guess, uh, from, you know, uh, blocking the water flow to leaking to other stuff that we won't mention because it's too, uh, you know, there's too many, uh, too much cussing involved in it, so. Too much stuff. I don't know why they, know why they give you these things first. Just come installed with the things on them and then you can just change them how you want to. Save them a bit of money. Well, I mean, how much really could those plastic little blue things cost? You go like a bill, like seven bucks each or something. So, somewhere, somewhere, and so let's talk about the water blocks I'm using for my cards. Graphics cards. Now, initially, I thought, you know. I'm not gonna need back plates, so screw it. I'm not gonna get them. I got these the other day, took one out, and I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna need back plates. So I ordered them, they're coming tomorrow. Oh, well, not to well, tomorrow? No, next week. Next Tuesday, I think. So I'm using the Water Cool Heat Killer uh, GTX3 uh, GPU X Cubed R9290X Acrylic Edition Nickel uh, GPU Water Blocks. That's a mouthful. Um, comes with uh, some manual stuff here. They're made in Germany. So, yeah. Um, but they are heavy as all heck. And you're going to need a backlit these things. Also come with these heat pad kind of things. I'm not sure if I'm going to use these or use, um, just use uh, my Gelid, uh, you know, Gelidon, uh, G-Lid on the uh, parts that these are supposed to go on. So it's all, uh, it's either Linus or uh, Jay used uh, thermal paste on the, you know, the different chips that these go on. So um, that could be interesting. Also on both of them, it got so hot that these actually melted a bit if you can see that there. It's just a bunch of different, you know, plastic washer bits, um, screws and an Allen wrench. Again, everything's using a freaking Allen kind of screw. That's why I think it's a standard over there in the UK, the EU. And here's the actual block and just listen to this. Well, let's do this set on break the table. Yeah, you heard saw that bounce that was from this thing. It weighs a metric ton. At least it feels like it does. And it's still sealed, okay. Well let's do it this way. So we're not cutting into the table. And I didn't even do a very good job of that, did I? Missed completely. So, these look pretty awesome. Um, 
a lot better than the crappy stuff you can get from uh, EK, for example. I mean, they sell a lot of the acrylic stuff. I don't know what, how fast. They must not make very many of the acrylic models, but well, I guess they call it Plexi models, but they sell out instantly almost, it seems. Yeah, so here we go. You got the uh, back of it here, and it's just like, you know, chrome. I'm going to blind you with the light up there. Let's see if I can get a nice glare. i got to get the actual light. Come on. It's like everything's backwards on this phone. Yeah, there we go. Get some nice kind of... So yeah, that's the the back of it here. You got the uh, you got this up here. This is where the you know, stuff goes into the hardware, um, intake, outtake, outflow, inflow. Um, this you know all this essentially all the surface area is going on to the different components. And like I said, it's heavy. And here's the front of it. And this is part of the reason why I wanted to get it because it just looks awesome. Um, a lot cooler looking than anything that EK has. Even the the Plexi flexi versions. Um, so what I'm planning to do with this is just going to have intake here, have this blocked off, take that one, block this one, have it come out here, and then hook it just from a, a, a fitting solid tube to fitting on the other one across. Or maybe eventually get just a solid solid tubing kind of connection or something. But uh, I think I'm just going to go with the tubing um, option because it'll look kind of cool that way. Um, again, Allen wrench on this too. Uh, on wrench uh, fitting screw use thing, whatever. Um, so, yeah, essentially what it is, I got two of them for both my cards. They are heavy, you will need a back plate to support the card. Because otherwise, I'm pretty sure it would like rip right out of the, rip the, the GP, the, uh, um, I, don't, I can't remember what the freaking thing is called now. <laughs> the, uh, uh, PCIe slot just right off the motherboard. Maybe. Uh, depending on how much you jerk it around. Um, so two of them. The other one's same exact thing, so I'm not going to show you both. And I think we're going to go ahead and do the case tonight as well. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do it, though. I might figure out how to mount this camera on something. Maybe I'll stack the boxes up and put you on top of the boxes. Because we're going to need to do that. Because this case is massive. Um... Actually, I need to put this back in. No, technically we wouldn't because I have the stuff over in the other box too. But try and keep things together here. All right, so I'm gonna stop while I figure out how to set this up, and then we'll continue. Yes, okay. So as you can see, we. We have this massive case that you can barely see me over. This is the Phantom, NZXC Phantom 820. Next generation case. It's actually listed as an Ultra Tower. Which is, I think, probably a lot, lots larger than the Full Tower case. I have an original... Actually, I have a good shot of the back here. Down here. See all the different features. Cool. Um, let's see. This back far enough to that box you're seeing the thing off of is actually, or no, you're looking at the the plate. Um, but yeah, I got you stacked up on top of the PSU box, both water cooling, uh, both water cooling uh, GPU blocks, the pump box, and the alpha cool radiator boxes. Let's see. So I can't get back far enough. Maybe I can move you back a little bit more. It'd be easier to do it this way. I guess this one's a le least less heavy box to deal with here. So, um, while you kind of take in the back there. Okay. All right. It's about as good as we're using So, all the stuff on this thing. Um, fully equipped with... So, it has... Um, Three 200 millimeter fans. Uh, I think it's two on top and one in the front of the case, maybe. Maybe it's a side case fan. And a 140 on the back here. 
high water cleaning solution.